More Americans are experiencing hypertension, meaning high blood pressure, as a result of the pandemic. This is based on a pretty impressive study that was just published in the journal called Circulation. Now, why would a pandemic cause people's blood pressure to run higher? Well, by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding why. But if I had to pick one word as the reason, it would be stress or anxiety. But this isn't just an assumption or a theory. Take a look at some of the most searched health topics of 2021. Like, why do I feel anxious for no reason? It's also no wonder why the US Surgeon General just warned about the devastating mental health effects that young people are facing, which have been amplified by the pandemic. The 53-page report shows the significant increases in self-reports of depression, anxiety, and mental health-related ER visits. One significant stat is that ER visits for suicide attempts rose 51% for adolescent girls in early 2021 as compared to the same period in 2019, while the figure rose 4% for boys. So yeah, stress, anxiety, depression, for a number of reasons. So far, COVID has taken over 785,000 American lives. Stress from lockdowns that cut social events and strained relationships, politics, unemployment. And what happens when people are stressed for a long time? More and more of the hormone cortisol is released from the adrenal glands in the body, it circulates into the blood, and affects the entire body. Too much cortisol in the body over a long period of time does lots of bad things. One of those things is it raises blood sugar. Another thing is that it weakens the immune system. And yes, it does also raise the blood pressure. Yes, the pandemic, it raised people's stress levels, but what did it also do? People weren't exercising as much. People were eating less healthy. They were drinking more alcohol, getting less quality sleep, and they weren't getting as much regular health care including less doctor visits and less adherence to medication regimen. In fact, it was these exact observations that led the lead author of the study to do the study in the first place. Based on this study, almost half a million Americans have higher blood pressure compared to the year before. To be more specific, the researchers at Cleveland Clinic found that the blood pressure reading for the most part stayed the same from 2019 through March of 2020, but had a big jump from April 2020 to the end of the study in December of 2020. When looking at blood pressure, it's really two measurements rolled into one. The top number is the systolic pressure related to the heart squeezing. The bottom number is the diastolic pressure related to the heart relaxing. Anyone with a blood pressure of 130 over 80 millimeters mercury or higher is considered to have high blood pressure. The average monthly change from April 2020 to December 2020 compared to one year prior to that was a 1.1 to 2.5 millimeter mercury increase in systolic pressure. For diastolic pressure, it was an average increase of 0.14 to 0.53 millimeters mercury. These numbers might not seem like they're a big deal, but when you have this jump in half a million people, it's actually considered to be a significant jump. The increases occurred in all of the subgroups. It occurred in all ages, in both men and women, although it was a bigger increase in women. Over time, having high blood pressure, even if it's just a little high, can damage blood vessels, your heart, brain, kidneys, and eyes, as well as sexual function. Almost half of American adults have high blood pressure, which is also known as the silent killer, because it can have life-threatening consequences despite there being little to no symptoms. With more and more people having higher blood pressure, that means more and more people will have strokes, heart attacks, heart failure, kidney impairment, visual impairment, and erectile dysfunction. So with more and more people having these conditions, it's gonna to lead to more hospital admissions, and guess what disease is already causing some hospitals to be filled to the brink? COVID. Fortunately, high blood pressure is relatively easy to diagnose and treat. In many cases, blood pressure can be adequately lowered without medication, simply by eating healthier, exercising more, and practicing stress reduction techniques. This would include things like yoga, meditation, and mindfulness. One of the main dietary changes you can make in order to lower blood pressure would entail eating more potassium and less salt. Take a look at this study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which had about 400 people in it. Half of them followed the typical American diet, which was the control group, and the other half following the DASH diet for three months. The conclusion, those who ate a low-sodium DASH diet can prevent or even reverse the typical rise in blood pressure that occurs as people get older. Thousands of years ago, during the Paleolithic period, our ancestors survived by eating an entirely different kind of diet, pretty much the opposite of what we eat today. They feasted on wild animals and a variety of plants. 
fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, roots, and even leaves. But this Paleolithic diet was high in potassium and low in sodium. Today's typical American diet is packed with processed foods full of white flour, fat, salt, sugar, as well as meat and dairy products with only a small percentage of fruits and vegetables. More than 40% of the sodium that Americans consume today comes from just 10 types of food. The 10 biggest culprits are breads and rolls, pizza, sandwiches, cold cuts and cured meats, soups, burritos and tacos, so-called savory snacks like chips and pretzels, chicken, cheese, and eggs and omelets. So eating less of this type of food and more of the healthy foods, exercising 150 minutes per week, doing stress reduction techniques, so mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and also getting good sleep, high quality sleep. These are the main ways of ridding yourself of the silent killer without medication.